Have you ever thought about a seed? Good seeds are little things that if planted at the right time, the right place, and are tended to, become huge blessings down the road. Whatever seeds you're sowing today, seeds for your future, for your family, for your faith, or for actual food, you're at the right place. Welcome to the Sowing Seed Podcast. Now from the studio in EIEIO, where the only traffic jam is getting behind a tractor on the road, here's your host, Matt Miller. The Garden Planogram. For those of you that are regular gardeners every year, or for those that are just looking to get started on your garden journey, something that I started doing several years ago that is helped us be much more successful with our gardening efforts is putting together a planogram. You probably don't know what a planogram is. To be honest, I didn't really know what one was either, even though I was doing it. And the dictionary definition online of a planogram is a diagram or model that indicates the placement of retail products on shelves in order to maximize sales. We talk about planograms sometimes in in SSV in our vending business and the laying out of products and that type of thing. But I, several years ago, bought a moleskin planner that is just um, graph paper, essentially pages and pages of graph paper. And every year, or actually twice a year, I put together a planogram of the garden where I draw out each of the raised beds and how they're situated, you know, next to one another. And then I jot down what my plan is for planting, what items are going to be planted there. I annotate the dates when either starts are are planted each planting season, or if I'm planting seeds, the days that, you know, seeds are planted that type of thing. It's a place where I can keep my notes and I can track what I did in years past. The importance of that is the fact that some vegetables don't grow well back to back with one another. Some do extremely well. And in many cases, at a bare minimum, whether you're getting to that level of detail or not, it's important to make sure you're not planting the same thing in the same place every year. A great example of that in our garden is zucchini. We literally, for several months out of the year, June, July, and potentially August, live off of zucchini here in EIEIO. And one of the things that I've found, at least here in our garden, is that squash bugs have the ability to be a major problem uh, after, you know, a month or so of uh, zucchini growing. And so a planogram is very, very, very important to make sure that I'm not growing zucchini in the same place each year. We typically do at least two, if not three, beds of it. And I also want to make sure that those beds are spread out so that it takes longer for those bugs to find the squash and to eventually destroy the plants and halt our zucchini production each summer. So that's just one example. I don't want to plant tomatoes in the same beds every year, etc. So it's important to have that planogram so that I can see, okay, this is what I planted last spring. These are the things I want to plant this coming spring, and this is where I'm going to plant them. Very, very, very important. There's a lot of books out there that'll teach you more of the details about what to plant where next to each other or, you know, those types of things. And I, I, the intention is not to get into a lot of that detail here. But just realizing the importance of planning. Now, you can also do this as you're prepping your fall garden as well. And you can draw out that planogram once again. Our fall garden tends to be just a couple of beds, not 
an entire garden like in the spring and summer. But once again, it's important to make sure that that we're aware of what grows well following what you know was planted there before and those types of things. Planning, planning, planning. So in my planogram, I can look back here now. We've been here going on seven years in EIEIO. I think I started the planogram five years ago, maybe. So I can go back and look and see what I've planted in years past. I can look at what varieties I've even planted. I need to do a better job of taking notes as far as what has grown well, what didn't, what things, you know, what are my learnings from last year that I can apply to this year. And of course, that notebook can be used for that type of thing as well. But very, very important. And of course, not just in planning in a garden, but planning in anything in life. Taking time to jot down important steps, important processes, goals, those types of things. So you have time to think through the specifics to make sure that the different parts are put together in a, in a proper order to accomplish the success you're looking for. And then being able to use that planogram for success. I've got, you know, of course, the Sowing Seed podcast that you're listening to me speak on now. And I essentially put together a planogram or a, at least a plan for this podcast over the next quarter to make sure that we are continuing to grow. Uh, we're continuing to produce the content that we're planning on producing. We're going to launch an Alexa briefing here early 2018 as an example and what steps need to happen for that to happen, what steps need to happen for us to continue to grow the podcast, etc. So anyway, planning and planograms are very, very important and just my thoughts on them and especially as they relate to the garden. Hope this helps. Thank you for listening to the Sowing Seed Podcast. If you enjoyed today's episode, please leave us a five-star review in iTunes or your podcast player of choice. So until next time, go plant the seed you need to succeed.